Hi guys, today on Breadbox, the channel dedicated to Commodore computers, we're putting the spotlight on one of the most craziest games on the Commodore 64. Crossroads 2, Pandemonium. So what is the definition of pandemonium? Wild and noisy disorder or confusion, uproar. You can use it in the sentence, there was a complete pandemonium. Everyone just panicked. This perfectly describes this highly addictive game on the Commodore 64. So another definition could also be, this game written by Steve Harter is pure pandemonium. Crap. <laughs> oh, I'm not still here. I didn't even notice. So the origins of Crossroads 2 is, it was a sequel to a type in the machine language program that appeared in the December 1987 issue of the Computes Gazette. Part 2, the game we're looking at today, also is a type of program in the same magazine one year later in December 1988 and this was issue number 66. Luckily for us, we don't actually have to type in the code for Crossroads 2 in the moment. As a quick search on the net, you can find tape and disc images for the game. But what if you're in lockdown during the COVID-19 pandemic? A quick search on the net will also find you issue number 66 of Compute Gazette magazine and you can actually type in the pages and pages of code. This is very time consuming, but if you're in a four week lockdown like New Zealand is right now, this may be a way to pass the time. But if you're like me, I'd rather just play it right now. I'm shooting myself. Crossroads 2 is an overhead shooting game for one or two players. To select two players, all you need to do is press forward on your joystick, and on the right of the screen you'll see a second little man appear. What if you want to play two players and you only have one joystick? Player 2 can use the C64 keyboard. So one is up, the arrow next to the one button is down, control button is left, and two is right and spacebar is fire. You can choose what level to start at by pressing keys 1 to 9. 1 being the easiest and 9 the hardest. But the only problem is when you press 2, this will also make it a 2 player game. To fix this, just press back on your joystick to change back to 1 player. The players are placed in a maze filled with creatures and have to collect whirling shield spars. If you collect 5 of these shield spars, you will advance to the next level. And collecting shield spars grants your player immunity to one enemy shot. Before you even get started though, you can preview the mini mini maps of the game by pressing F7. This also allows you to watch your enemy creatures interact. This preview or demo mode shows you 8 of the 16 creatures at any one time fighting it out. That's right, you have 16 different types of creatures on this game. Crossroads 1 only had 9, so this is actually a huge increase of creatures. There is... Blue Egghead, Blue Flea, Brown Monkey, Green Rubber Head, Green Vacuum. Watch out for this guy as he sucks up anyone in front of him. Grey Archer, Grey Thrower, Orange Lion, Pink Mutant. Pink tag team, so these can join together and become more powerful. Purple rubber head. Red chomper. Shooting worm. White skull. Yellow lemon shark. Brown dog, don't shoot him, he's man's best friend and he can actually help on each level.
During gameplay, you can pause the game at any time by pressing F5. This is also a great opportunity to change the colour of your player. Press F1 to change player 1 and F3 to change player 2's colours. As mentioned, in the idea of the game is to collect shield spars, so collecting 5 progresses you to the next maze. But any creature can also collect shield spars and the only way to return them back to the maze is if the creature is killed by you or by another creature. So really, this is a free-for-all, or is it? While playing Crossroads 2, you soon realise that there are alliances at play. While most creatures will kill you in a maze runner type frenzy, they will kill each other too. And this, they are for example, orange lions or brown monkeys. They actually won't hurt each other. And of course, brown dog won't hurt you. Each creature has a special ability of some sort and they are pretty intelligent too. Not only will they go after the shield spars to gain extra abilities that some color spars give, and also to stop you getting them, they will also actively avoid getting shot by you while seeking you out to destroy you. One feature of the mazes is they wrap around, which is handy if you want to get to one side of the map and then to the other, but it also means you can also send your bullets from one side of the screen to the other in an endless loop. Which is great if creatures walk into the line of fire, but it also means you can shoot yourself too, so be careful. Thanks for watching Breadbox today guys, and Justin's on the men now. He wanted to thank everyone for all your well wishes and support. And also to those out there coping with the COVID-19 and the pandemic, keep safe, be kind, and we'll get through this together. Till next time. We also wanted to say thank you for all the support you've given. <laughs> we want to say be kind, take care, and hopefully... <laughs>